In today's video, we are going to cover everything you need to know about miniature photography, and I hope you are as excited about it as these two. Sponsored by Skillshare. One of the things I love about miniature painting is that it combines so many different aspects into a single hobby. And taking proper pictures at the end of a project is just one of these aspects. It feels good to have the final presentation to put on your Instagram or anywhere else on the internet and just be able to share it with others. To me, a project isn't really done unless I have these final pictures up. And let's face it, it's really satisfying to wrap up something you poured a lot of energy and work into this way. It's almost like finally framing a picture you painted and being able to put it up on a wall. Especially when you are entering an online competition, investing enough time into taking proper pictures of something you invested a lot of time into creating almost becomes mandatory. At least it makes a lot of sense not to neglect that very important part. Because anyone can go ahead and snap a wobbly shot on the fly, but it will diminish your efforts and also your chances in the competition. I acquired all the photography skills I needed for taking pictures of miniatures through learning by doing. And I'd say I know just enough to be decent at what I needed for. So in this video, I will show you everything that I learned in the past years and that has helped me get through two voting stages that involved people purely looking at my pictures, at the pictures that I took of a miniature, and finally placing third in the 2019 Ever Chosen competition. So if you want to be in the next Ever Chosen finals, this video is going to teach you everything you need to know in an approachable and application-focused way. The first thing you will need is a setup that puts the focus on your miniatures, something that blocks out any noise in the background and it will help your camera know what to focus on. And the good thing is, if you have a painting space set up, you can just take the space and place down a background like this and just use your painting lights. If you want to up your presentation, you can get some fancy backgrounds printed. Like I have a couple of these PVC coated backdrops that make my photos recognizable because I use the same ones for different miniatures. It makes sense to have at least a bright one and a dark one because you might want to create a different mood for different types of miniatures for your final presentation. But to get started, you can just use a white sheet of paper like this. The good thing is, in this situation, you already have your painting lights set up and you can just use those to light the figure properly. A question that I get a lot is which are the best lamps to get for uh, painting and photography. My setup to take pictures did not really change a lot over the years and it's pretty affordable too. All you need is two of these desktop lamps. I got mine from Ikea for €9.90 and two LED light bulbs. Ideally daylight balance to 6500 Kelvin. Mine cost €5.99 each. A lot of people use these LED light arms for painting and they also work pretty good for picture taking. An advantage is that you only have one arm on your table, but it basically covers as much space as my two lamp setup when you place it correctly. However, it costs about four to five times as much as my setup. And that's the only reason why I have not picked up one yet. I'll link this one in the description too. And as always, I think it's a bit of a personal preference, at least when it comes to painting. My lamps are actually 4000 Kelvin, which is a bit on the warmer side of the spectrum. Because personally, I feel it relaxes my eyes a bit more and it's less straining than pure daylight balance bulbs. And so for a long time, I also took pictures with these 4000 Kelvin bulbs. A lot of people like to paint with higher Kelvin numbers, but in my opinion, you kind of got to find what works for you. Anything from 4000 Kelvin to 6500 Kelvin is okay. What you want to avoid is that yellow tone that normal household light bulbs have. For picture taking, I have switched to 6500 Kelvin bulbs. You can see the difference here. The resulting pictures are just that tiny bit more accurate. One thing we need to talk about is light boxes. In the past, someone came up with the idea that those would be good for miniature painting, but they really are not. The general idea behind it comes from taking pictures of bigger things, whenever you're taking pictures of people, for example. We have a relatively small light source for a relatively big object that we want to take pictures of, and having a small light source 
is going to cast very harsh shadows. And because of that, we try to make the light source bigger so that it becomes a more global, softer light. Take a very sunny day, for example. The sun becomes a really small light source when we compare it to an overcast day where the clouds become a diffusion box and we get a very even light distribution and there's no harsh shadows. So it's only a natural idea to try to make the light source bigger when we take photos of miniatures, but it's really not necessary. If you compare the size of the light source to the size of a figure, you see that it's gigantic in comparison. We don't need diffusion. Additionally, the way light boxes work, you get light from wrong angles because you want the light to come from the front, which is just not possible with light boxes and all kinds of weird bounce light effects and overall your results will look weird. So in no situation do you need a light box for miniature painting. The lights we talked about before are everything you need. Next up we have to talk about cameras for a tiny bit and the good news is you don't have to invest a lot of money into cameras to get decent pictures. Most people will have a smartphone that is able to take proper pictures if you know how to. Things you should be looking for in a camera at the minimum is manual white balance, the possibility to go to very low ISO settings, a timer so you don't shake the camera while pressing the shutter, and a tripod mount. Manual exposure and aperture settings are a nice bonus to have, but in my opinion, a lot of cameras already have this by default and even some smartphones have these possibilities nowadays. If you are on a budget, you could consider a simple point and shoot camera. The Panasonic Lumix DMC FZ8 II you should be able to pick up for about 259 bucks. For about 100 bucks more you can get a Canon EOS 2000D. It's a great first DSLR camera that has a great kit lens and you can always start expanding from there and get different lenses and even eventually a different body. Apart from the GH5 that I'm shooting on, I have a Lumix G70. It's a mirrorless system cam that I bought for just over 400 euros on Cyber Monday. And I used this one for just about everything I did, miniature, photography and videography related for the past three years. Right now it should sell for about 450 bucks and it's a pretty solid choice if you want to go for a mirrorless system cam. If you don't like Panasonic, the Canon EOS M50 is a solid choice. Squidmar, for example, always recommends this camera in this price segment and it's a really solid choice too. I'll put links to where you can pick up these camera suggestions in the description if you're feeling lucky today and you want to support me at the same time. And if you want to buy a dedicated camera for miniature photography, the good thing is you can always use these cameras for taking pictures of the kids, even make small movies, take them on vacations and just shoot some pretty pictures of the sights you see and just be a bit of a hobby photographer in general. So even if you are on a budget, this can maybe be an additional incentive to get a new camera because taking pictures is a really fun hobby. And if you want to dive deeper into photography, this video's sponsor has a really great offer for you. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of different classes on tons of different interesting topics. And there is also an extensive section of photography. You can go on an hour long journey into basic and advanced settings and how to apply them in any given situation. And there's also a few classes about making the best out of your smartphone camera. And of course, there's also classes on editing taught by industry professionals. But there's so many more topics to explore on the platform, especially if you are a creative mind, you will love what Skillshare has to offer. For me, it was really easy to pick up the basics of watercolor and it was fun to see so many different teachers with different styles and to follow along. Skillshare is always a great sponsor to have because you know, I only recommend products and services I can stand behind and use myself and I literally spend hours on the platform diving into not only creative topics, but also marketing, freelancing, web design, even music. And I always pick up something new I didn't know before. So I'm happy that I can offer a free trial of Skillshare Premium to the first 1000 people that click the link in the description. And yes, that means access to full premium with no strings attached. And the best thing is you're also supporting this channel in the process. Why not give it a try? So now it's time to put everything we learned so far in this video together. You want to set up the lights from the front and slightly up. So the miniature or bust is equally 
and properly lit from where you take the picture from. I recommend to get a tripod. This doesn't have to be a very expensive one. A cheap plastic one like this will do. And if you only use it to take pictures of miniatures, just setting it up for the height of your photo area will be enough. Turn the camera on so you can position your miniature in the center of the screen. You don't need to be very close for this. I place the miniature at roughly 30 centimeters or 12 inch from the lens. Set your ISO to the lowest possible setting to get the least grainy results and adjust your aperture value or f-stop and the shutter speed to balance the exposure to where your miniature is represented the most accurately. For a white or black background, your aperture setting doesn't matter much and it doesn't matter what the shutter speed is set to because we're using a tripod as long as the exposure result is properly done. Just make sure your aperture is set to a large enough number so your depth of field is big enough to capture all of your miniature in focus. If you want to use a textured background, however, you need to decide if you want it sharp, then you need to increase the depth of field by setting a high aperture value and compensate exposure with the shutter speed. And if you want a blurry background, you have to set a low aperture value and again, adjust the shutter speed to compensate. Note that a dark background will make your miniature appear subjectively brighter than a bright background. If you're using a smartphone camera, you can get one of these adapters that have a tripod mount to stabilize your device. Adjust the distance and position and make sure your lamp slide the figure properly from the front and slightly up. Focus on the face and adjust the exposure before you hit the shutter release with a set timer. Modern smartphones allow you to choose a lot of settings and make them a viable option for miniature photography. You can adjust the white balance. Here I set it to my light bulb's temperature, adjust the exposure through shutter speed and take the picture. If you don't want to mess with too many settings, you can leave the phone on auto, set the focus and you will get an exposure slider that you should pull down to where your exposure captures a nice contrast in the figure and boom, proper pictures, as easy as that. Our result is pretty good. The only thing I do in Photoshop, if it's needed, is to adjust the contrast and brightness a bit. And that's it. Now I hope I was able to teach you something through this video and hopefully it convinced you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. It's a great way to help me make more videos because I have a day job and I can't upload regularly so by subscribing you will get notified when I upload and you won't miss a video. And in return my videos will get more views and through that get recommended more which ultimately helps growing the channel. If you want to support me monetarily, don't forget to check out all my affiliate links in the description. If you want a new camera or just anything that you need regularly for miniature painting anyway, like brushes or brush soap. And of course, any support on Patreon goes a long way. You can also watch one of my other videos, like the ones showing on screen now or the ones on the right. That helps a ton as well. For now, thanks for watching and stay creative.